Welcome to Secrets Out Idaho. Each week, we let you in on the secrets of Southern Idaho and speak to the people who make it such a unique hidden gem. I'm your host, Connie Stouffer. On today's episode, we'll be talking to local Chobani food scientist, Porter Long. What does a food scientist do? How can you become one? And where are his favorite places to eat? We'll be talking about all of that and more. Porter, welcome to Secrets Out Idaho. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So first, can you just start off by telling me a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Porter Long, and I am 26 years old. I am married, and I have two dogs and two chickens. Two chickens? That's awesome. Yes, a recent addition to the family. Do the dogs get along with the chickens okay? Yeah, they're very curious, but they're fenced off, and I think they've made a friendly relationship. That's good. My husband's been trying to talk me to get into chickens, and I'm pretty sure my dog would see it as a challenge. So It's worth it. The eggs are great. Tell me a little bit about your job. So yeah, I work for Chobani as a research and development scientist. Um, I work specifically on the flips, which are the yogurt mix-in products. Um, In my job role, I do everything from uh, thinking of a concept behind the flip all the way to commercializing it uh, on a large scale so that I can, can go out to all the grocery stores across America. That's so exciting. How did you get into food science? Were you always interested in food or was it something that you discovered later on? Yeah, so I have a kind of a funny story. When I was uh, a young kid, I think around five or six years old, my mom entered me into a 4-H club uh, competition. It was a dairy um, competition. Anyways, um, with my mother, we made homemade yogurt and we also made homemade strawberry jam from strawberries in our garden. And I ended up, you know, winning a prize in that little competition. And I got, I won a t-shirt and it was a a turquoise t-shirt with cows jumping across it that said, get moving with milk. (laughs) (laughs) And ever since then, I guess I did get moving with milk because 20 years later, here I am working for a yogurt company, one of the largest in the, in the world. So there you have it. (laughs) That's so amazing. Started off making yogurt. Now you're making yogurt now. That's that's yep. really amazing. Yep. Not very many kids kind of get their start that early. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. So uh, where did you go to school for food science? So I, w- I did my undergrad in food science at BYU uh, down in Utah. And right now I am currently doing my master's program online. I'm doing a master's of agriculture uh, degree through Washington State University. And that's an online program and I should be finishing up uh, next year. So that's exciting. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah. So what kind of, so if someone was thinking about going to school or going back to school for food science, what kind of classes do you take and what kind of background is helpful to be successful? So I think to be successful, first you have to be passionate about food, um, not just enjoying eating food, <laughs> but really interested in, in cooking and where food comes from. Um, I think that's a really important platform. Um, As far as classes you take in a food science degree, um, it's a broad variety. You take food chemistry classes, so you get to learn what milk's made up of on a molecular level. Um, You take food microbiology classes. You take uh, quality assurance classes to make sure the food's safe. Uh, Product development courses are some that I took. Um, so you do a wide variety of chemistry, microbiology, physics. So it's it's seeing the broad spectrum of food science and kind of learning how to do uh, how to do everything in the industry. And then you kind of choose where you want to go. If you want to go into quality assurance, because that's interesting to you, some people do that. Some people go into food regulatory, more on the legal side. I decided to go into research and development because I'm passionate about food and, and really wanted to deal with, hands on with the food. So that's what I decided to do. That sounds so exciting. There's so many different facets to it. You could really take a career a lot of different ways. So you're hands on. So what's a day in the life of a food scientist look like? So it it can really, it sounds cliche, but no, two days are the same. It it is true. (laughs) Um, Some days I may be working on specifications uh, to get the exact nutritional uh, profile we want for a certain product. That's working on the level of sugars, level of calories, fat. Um, all that. Another day I might be in the pilot plant making samples to send out to various customers, Target and Kroger, Walmart. Um, Another day I might be in our little creation lab working with all different sorts of nuts, seeds, cookies, you know, to try to make the next great flip, you know, because we're always trying to make something that's going to excite consumers and that's going to make them want to eat yogurt. Um, So really every day um, 
is something that I'm passionate about and I it, it might not always be fun but it's always exciting and dynamic and that's what I really love about my job that's fantastic so What's kind of the inspiration as you're kind of coming up with new flavors? Do you pull from like your own personal things that you like to eat or is it trying to gauge what, you know, is trending out there or, or is it a little bit of both? Or Yeah, we, we find inspiration everywhere, honestly. Um, it's pretty cool. On our team, we're fairly diverse. We have, I have one teammate who's from China and she's not familiar with classic American concepts. <laughs> and so it's always fun kind of explaining to them like, is this what an apple pie tastes like? And, and, and she's, she'll be working on an apple pie and she'll be asking us from our experience. <laughs> and then we have, you know, our manager is, is from India. And so he has a different concept of flavors. And, and for example, he really loves uh, like a raspberry rose is something. He loves that rose flavor, but some of us think it tastes like soap, <laughs> you know? And so we, we have a very diverse group of people and very diverse inspiration. And we really get it from a, a, a variety of sources. Um, something interesting that we've found with American consumers, for better or worse, is that they like very relatable things. Um, like a, a couple of years back, we had a mango sriracha flip. Ooh. And it was really exciting and, and tasty. Uh, one lady even said that she it was so spicy that she had to drink a whole gallon of milk. <laughs> It really wasn't that spicy, but um, we found that that doesn't resonate with consumers as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so now we've been focusing in on classic American nostalgic flavors that everybody can relate to. Some, some of our successes have been like cookies and cream, s'mores, mint chocolate chip. And I think I have those in my fridge right now. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. And so that's that's been something that we've learned and that we've been focusing on because people love it. <laughs> so um, that's interesting. I was traveling abroad once and I told somebody that I liked peanut butter and jelly. And for them, like jelly is not like we think of it as jelly. And that just sounded gross to them. Um, and they were like, what? <laughs> um, but so it, I always am fascinated, too, because some of the names are really funny. Is that part of you, your job, or is that a different department that's coming up with those creative names for the flips? And so we do have a lot of say, and that is one thing I really enjoy, is that we, we touch a lot of different uh, departments in our job. We work with the marketing team, so on the naming, we work collaboratively. They'll bounce names off of us, and we'll say, oh, not so much. <laughs> yeah. and, and then they'll have some really great names. Um, so it's, it's really great. We get to work dynamically with uh, the corporate team in New York um, and just all different departments, advertising, marketing, the product development team. So it's really exciting and fun to see every single part of the business. That's so exciting. And I feel like the flips are relatively new, but they've seemed to really take off. That's which is must be pretty exciting from your standpoint, since you're doing all the flavors and definitely it's been, ex it's been exciting to see the flips grow. And then when I tell people what I do, they say, Oh yeah, Chobani flip. I love that one. I love almond coco loco or key lime <laughs> or s'mores. That's my favorite. I feed it to my kids every day. And, and it is fun to have something that people recognize and that they're excited about. When did you move to the Magic Valley? You're not from Southern Idaho originally, right? No, I'm, I, I grew up in Utah and then I lived in Oregon and Florida. Um, I moved to Twin Falls about three years ago. Actually, my first day at Chobani was three years ago uh, on Friday. So. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, so it's exciting. <laughs> I remember my first day in Idaho. It was negative two degrees here. And, <laughs> and, uh, and that's not what I was expecting, but it's actually not that cold here. It just happened to be a weird cold spell. It was a cold welcome for it you. It was a very cold welcome, but then it got warmer as it went on, and, and now I really love living in Twin Falls. That's fantastic. So being in Utah, you probably had a little bit of an idea of what to expect, at least from like the landscape in, in Idaho. Was there anything that surprised you when you moved here, or did you know what to expect? Had you been here before? I honestly had not been here before. I had been up to the Sun Valley area uh, quite a bit growing up, but I never, I had always just passed by Twin Falls. And so I was missing the best part of Twin Falls, which for me is the Snake River Canyon. Um, when I, you know, when I see, when I saw that canyon, that was almost like just a, a nail in the, you know, it just, it's something that, you know, you can walk along the trails and just the pure beauty of it is really something that sets Twin Falls apart from other cities. It's just that landmark that really makes it special. And it's one of those things that you have to come to Twin Falls to know because you, if you can't see it, you know, it's not like a mountain that you can see for hundreds of miles away. You actually have to come here and experience it because I had driven from Pocatello to Boise so many times and hadn't come down into the canyon. And then when I moved here, I was like, oh my gosh, why have I not been down here? And so that's 
That's so exciting. Exactly. Every time I have um, visitors come, I always take them to the canyon to watch the base jumpers. And it's just something that is that wow factor. They always want to take pictures there. <laughs> you know, sometimes I take them kayaking or paddle boarding down on the Snake River. So I just think it's a really great place. So um, is that what you and your wife like to do when you're not working is kind of get down on the river and go kayaking? We do a wide variety of things. We do like to go kayaking uh, a couple times a summer. Uh, my wife doesn't love the water, uh, but, you know, I, I think it's great. <laughs> we also like to rock climb. So oh, awesome. we, we go out to Durkee's Lake. We've, we've taken that up in the past uh, year or so because of the new rock climbing gym that opened, Gemstone. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing indoor climbing as well as outdoor climbing at, at Durkee's Lake and even down to City of Rocks, which is just beautiful, about an hour and a half away. There's probably as much climbing as you can handle over at City Rocks. There's so much oh, over there. You could never do all the climbs possible <laughs> over there. So. That's fantastic. And so um, do your dogs go out on your adventures too, or are they more homebodies? Yes. One of our dogs is very great at adventuring, and the other one has some car issues where <laughs> she, like, drools and gets very anxious. Oh. <laughs> so we put her in her crate in the back of the car to kind of isolate her. But, yes, they love once they get outside the car, they're super excited, and they love going, you know, wherever we're going to a lake or river or the mountain mountains they, they love running around that's awesome so when you're not recreating you're not creating food where do you like to eat i feel like a food scientist is going to know yes. where are the great places to eat um are. so one of the i would say hidden gems of twin falls uh would be emma's cafe it's on blue lakes and it's actually a bosnian restaurant and the reason why I like it is because, one, it's not a chain restaurant, and two, I think they do something unique. They have these, what are called, chavapi sandwiches, and they're these, like, pita bread sandwiches with meat and sausage and onions and roasted peppers and sour cream. And I was blown away. The first time I ate there, I, I couldn't believe that, you know, a small town like Twin Falls had something this cool and unique. But I think that's part of, you know, Twin Falls has a lot of refugees and a lot of different nationalities. And when they bring that flavor and that um, new cuisine to Twin Falls, I think that's really cool. And I hope that we continue to see more of that coming into Twin Falls. Me too. I found out about Emma's as well. And I took my husband there. And we, it's kind of, it's on Blue Lake. So it's a busy street, but you don't necessarily see it and so unless you're looking for it it's, so it's somehow hidden in plain sight but it is so good especially if you want to try different meats and the sour cream stuff sauce that they have there is delicious yes it really is the best it's really good any other places you guys like to hit up so i mean i think anchor and scooters are kind of classic for sports bars mm -hmm. um we do like um prasai or taste of thai mm -hmm. we, we really like asian food so and then all you can eat sushi is sushi ah, is always a good option it's all you can eat all oh, you can eat sushi that's awesome i'm gonna yes. have to check that out <laughs> see i knew i was gonna learn something new so top three favorite things about Magic Valley, Twin Falls, now that you've been here for three years, what's your, your favorite things that if someone hasn't been here that they should definitely check out? So one of the things is I love the community events. Um, there's something special about being in a small town. I mean, it's a relatively small town, still has a decent population, but when there's a community event, everyone comes out for it. One example, just this last week, um, Christmas in the nighttime sky down in Kimberly, um, there is a, a big get together with bonfires and free chili and baked potatoes. Oh, really? And then after, there's this amazing fireworks show that is way better than many of the Fourth of July fireworks shows. That I I've think seen. I heard the fireworks. I was at home the other night. And I could hear them. I was like, "Are those fireworks?" But I couldn't see them from my house, so that explains it. <laughs> yes, it's a great event. And and other things that I like are the the farmers market. They now have one downtown. I really enjoy Saturdays during the summer. Um, going to the farmer's market and getting local produce and you know there's local crafts and different music and so I really enjoy the local events um, for sure. Um, other things I think that I really have enjoyed uh, the community that I've met here. Um, I think being a food scientist it, it's a great place to be um, because you have you know Chobani, you have Glanbia, you have Cliff Bar, um, and you have other food science companies with a lot of young food scientists, and we all have become friends uh, because most people work at one place or the other, <laughs> and it's it's this great group of young people, and everybody knows each other, and everybody invites each other to different events and parties, and I think that's just been one of my favorite things is it's not such an intimidating place when like as if you're living in a big city, you know, trying to meet people. It comes pretty naturally because there's just people, there's not 
a huge variety of people your age. So the people that are your age, you j- tend to uh, hang out with and, and do gravitate that. towards a exactly. little. Exactly. Yeah. That was going to be one of my other questions about working for a really big company. What's it been like working for Chobani, it's such a big company, and particularly like one of the biggest employers here in Twin Falls? I think it's it's pretty awesome. I mean, it, it connects you to the community when. Whenever I see someone and, you know, I, I tell them I work at Chobani, they say, oh, do you know so-and-so? He works in packaging. Or do you know so-and-so? He's a forklift driver. And it just really connects you to people. Um, in addition, one of the things I love most about Chobani is the, the service opportunities that they give. Um, almost every week or every month, there's an opportunity to do some sort of service, whether you're giving out yogurt. Uh, I got to go up to Boise and hand out yogurt during a, a marathon up there. Oh, fun. Um, you know, there's the, we're handing out yogurt during the Christmas parade this Friday. Oh, I'm going to be there. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> and I mean, there's just so many opportunities that we get and it's, and it's so fun to be um, connected to the community and to be giving back and to be given those opportunities consistently is, is something I really love about Chobani. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And um, it's just, it's, I've always, since I've moved here, I've been so impressed with companies like Chobani because some companies just set up and they do their thing and that's totally fine, but others get really integrated in the community and want to give back. And Chobani has been one of those. So it's, that must be so exciting to be able to be a part of that giving back. Yeah. And I think one of the really cool things that I, uh, that, that Chobani is doing right now um, that I think they're going to announce pretty soon here is that it's the, the, the Chobani Community Impact Fund, that they're giving $100,000 to various local uh, businesses and humanitarian causes. Um, for, and, for big ideas? That, yeah, for yeah. big ideas. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they're just about to announce the recipients of, of the money. And I think that's so cool that Chobani wants to give back the community and and have the opportunity to create something that potentially maybe could become like Chobani one day because ultimately Chobani was a startup company with one guy with an idea and now it's a you know billion dollar company and brand that that is so ex- I'm so excited to hear the winners and who who they announced because I'm sure they're going to be doing amazing things in the community and that reminds me about the food incubator program that Chobani has set up and that's such an incredible way to help inspire future entrepreneurs and that want to have a great idea. And I think that's fostering that creativity and that entrepreneurship is really amazing. Yeah, it's been really fun to see all the different Chobani incubator companies. We get to see them. Usually they they bring them to Twin Falls and, you know, we do a little presentation with with research and development to show them kind of how we do our process. And they can also, you know, bounce questions off of us if they're having development issues with their product. They can, you know, bounce it off of us. And it's been so fun to see these companies doing really exciting innovative things that are not only just tasty products, but they're healthy and they're uh, mission-based, impact-based, and really trying to do the same type of things that Chobani believes in, which is not just making good food, but doing it for the right reasons and helping the world. That's so fantastic. I didn't know that you worked with the companies that were going through the incubator. That's amazing that they get kind of to go through all those different channels that Chobani has to help make them real well-rounded and, and successful. Yeah, it's been really, really fun to work with them. That's awesome. How, how often do you get to, to to work with them? Is it pretty regularly or is it kind of by season? Or Yeah, it's pretty regularly. Um, they have, I think it's one or two classes each year that they do, and they've done multiple by now. Um, so it's, it's about two or three times a year that we get to interact with these incubator companies and it's fun to also see see these companies grow after leaving Chobani like one that I remember is Bonza they're a chickpea uh, pasta company and they make like macaroni and cheese from chickpea protein because it's you know higher in protein and it's healthier um, so th- watching them grow from being a small company now to being on a lot of grocery store shelves is really cool but that's really amazing to be able to see that transformation and have been a part of that that's really rewarding so I know we've covered a lot about why food science is amazing, but if we haven't sold them already on why they should consider it, what, why should someone consider a career in food science? Oh, I'll give you one other reason. Food science is where I met my wife. Oh, so, so love is in the air. <laughs> yes. You know, there, there's a funny story. I was actually in a quality assurance lab um, on campus uh, when I was doing my undergrad, and um, there were five people that got hired onto the QA lab um, for this next semester, and I was one of them. Um, my wife was another one of them oh. and then two of the other three ended up getting married really? as well. So we had four out of five people. What about the poor fifth one that didn't yeah, find love? Yeah, she's still not married, oh, no. <laughs> but she's doing great. She's, she's actually up in Boise and doing really awesome. That's fantastic. So 
You fell in love in school. How did you and your wife make the transition to uh, to Idaho from from Utah? What did you know you'd want to move up here, or was it? job driven. So what happened, she graduated before me. Uh, she was working in a microbiology lab in Salt Lake. Uh, she had a good job. She really liked it there. Um, but we kind of always knew that we were going to move out of Utah after we graduated. Um, I ended up getting the opportunity to come to Chobani and, you know, it was kind of an opportunity we couldn't pass up. So she ended up um, starting to apply for jobs and actually got a job at Chobani in quality assurance. Oh, wow. So for a while, uh, over a year, we worked together at Chobani, um, and that was really fun, you know, working <laughs> for the same company. Uh, just recently, a little over a year ago, she got a job with Glanbia, and she's working in research and development, but she's working on cheese. So she's, oh. a, she's a cheese scientist. <laughs> so now we got the yogurt and we got the cheese, so we're pretty well-rounded as far as dairy's concerned. <laughs> as dairy goes. <laughs> cheese scientist is also a really cool-sounding title. It's probably an even cooler title than mine. So. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Is there anything that I haven't asked you yet that you want to share about food science, about working at Chobani, about why Southern Idaho is awesome, or any secret spots that you want to share um, to let people know why they should come check it out? Yeah, I, I just think as a whole, it's definitely a, a hidden gem. The, the thing that I really love about being in Twin Falls is the location is such that you have Sun Valley about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes away. So there's, you know, it, it's, it's a whole different type of beauty in Sun Valley. You drop into the Wood River Valley and it's these beautiful pine trees and aspens. And I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. And, and there's also some really fantastic restaurants there. In Oteca is one that I would recommend. Ooh, it's, okay. it's a really great restaurant. Um, and then we have Boise, which is an hour and 45 minutes uh, up the road and so if you ever need to do like any big shopping or you want to just go to a little larger city um, you can go up to Boise and that's really great and then um, Salt Lake City is only like three hours away and then we have the South Hills so like everywhere surrounding us there's something interesting and exciting so you really can't ever run out of things to do there's so many there's still so many places I want to visit so many different hot springs that I want the to go hot to. springs yeah we're putting together a list of, of 12 hot springs you have to check out okay good I need that list because I have <laughs> I have a lot of them but I I need to find more of them yeah there's so many I keep finding about new ones and they're kind of some of them are hidden you got to hike to them and so those are the fun ones yes yeah I'm, I'm really excited to do that and and there's just so many so many different hiking trails and mountain biking. I, I mean, it's it's really an outdoor paradise. And then on the other hand, if you're a little more of a homebody, it's also a very peaceful and relaxing place to live. You know, it's it's quiet, it's it's slow paced. So it really has, I feel like, everything that you could want. We have Costco. <laughs> and we have Target. Target, that's a big know? selling point. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got everything you need. So yeah. even yeah. though it is a small town, we have all the bases covered. But without like the traffic and Exactly. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that like when I go to bigger cities and I get stuck in traffic and I'm like I couldn't do this every day. Oh, I'm spoiled. Yeah, I have a four minute commute to work <laughs> in the morning. And so when I get when I go to a bigger city and I'm at a five lane road with all this traffic, it makes me anxious. I, yeah. I'm not used to it anymore. I know me too. Or when I do like pay for parking or like figure out like yeah, parking garages and stuff. Yeah, I went to Boise the other day and I was like in a garage. I'm like, this is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we get a little bit spoiled here sometimes. Yep. One other exciting new thing that just came out. Um, so we just launched our new kids platform, oh. which is called Gimme's. Gimme. So it's like, please give me some more. <laughs> Anyways, um, and it's a whole, whole new revised um, look at making, adding some more excitement to the kids yogurt category. Because um, up, up to this point, Giovanni only had their pouches and yogurt tubes. Um, but now we have actually kids flips. Oh. So we have specific flavors for kids like poppin' cotton candy, Ooh. choco chunk cookie dunk, and they all have different characters. And I mean, the, the artwork is beautiful. They have blue and white striped packaging. It's really, really cool. So I, I, I got the opportunity to work on those and to actually test them with kids Ooh, that's fun. and get their feedback. And so this whole platform was inspired by kids. And um, I think consumers hopefully are really going to love it and keep an eye out for the bright blue packaging in the stores. When, when should those be hitting shelves? So I think they've started to ship out and they, they should be next week. They should be arriving in stores. So keep your eye out for that. That's awesome. So by the time this airs, they will be out there. Yes. So people should be going to the store. Go find those them. Up. 
So was it a lot different working with uh, kids doing like the test, the, you know, I'm sure giving the, get, getting their feedback as opposed to adults who are trying new flavors was oh, a whole different experience. Com- completely different. I mean, you just, you have to put yourself back in your, the shoes of, of when you were a kid, you know, it's, it's a totally different development process and kids are just, you know, they like bright, colorful, exciting things. Uh, whereas when you're working for adults, it's more, you know, kind of basic, you know, type things. And, and, and I really enjoyed doing that. We got to... You want a more refined color palette yeah. than kids, maybe. Well, with kids, you got to work with sprinkles and, <laughs> you know, like different popping things. I mean, it, it was it was really fun. So. That's so exciting. Well, I can't wait to check them out. I might have to get some for my little one, too. You should. Or maybe just for myself, because those flavors sounded pretty yum. Yes. Both <laughs> for adults and kids. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> So what about your wife? Tell me what, what, what was her impression when, when she moved here? Had she always lived in Utah or was she from somewhere else? No, she's actually from uh, Michigan. She lived in a, a suburb outside Detroit, in between Detroit and Ann Arbor. Um, so, so bigger, used to a bit much bigger city. Yeah, she was used to a much bigger city. Um, but I think something about Twin Falls, it just it, it felt right. It felt comfortable, you know. Like we, we felt at home here pretty quickly. Um, I, I think we really loved, you know, when we take our dogs on walks and being able to see out in the fields. And, and that's something when we go back to Michigan or I go out east and there's, I, I can't see anywhere because there's tre- <laughs> trees are great. Don't get me wrong. I love trees. But I also love the wide open spaces. And when I couldn't see any landmarks, any mountains, it kind of freaks me out. You know, you, you can kind of get like lost. Where you yeah, are. I know my husband and I, uh, he used to live in Wisconsin, so he was used to all the trees and then he, his family moved out here and it's all that wide open space. And we went back east once and it made him feel claustrophobic because there was like, you're, you get all this big sky and all these great expanses and then you get closed in by the trees and you don't realize it until you go back and you're like, where's the sky? Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad she's enjoying it and liking it. Yeah, and she's really loving her job at Glanbia, which is, you know, another great company uh, in Twin Falls. And, and she also gets to be creative. Our, our job roles are we're both research and development, but we actually do very different things. Uh, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, in in school, there was two, two tracks. One was a technical track and one was a business management track. Um, she did the business management track and I did the technical track, which was more chemistry based while she did more um, accounting and finance and things like that. Um, well, in, in our job roles, I do much more business management, product <laughs> development type stuff, and she does much more technical research based uh, initiatives. So we kind of swapped, swapped roles. Which so is, is there a lot of work talk around the dinner table when you get home? Yeah, I mean, whenever whenever we get together with, with each other and other food scientists, it's fun because we all speak the same language. It's kind of an, an odd niche um, <laughs> type field, but... It's really tight knit, you know, and, and that, that's something I really love about it. Even even nationally, you know, everyone knows everybody that's in food science because we go to the same conferences and, and we meet the same people and, you know, you work with different suppliers and, and that's been really, really rewarding to be part of that, that community locally and, and as well as nationally. That's so fantastic. And I feel like you're pretty young and so you've been given a lot of opportunities through Chobani fairly early, it sounds like, through through it being innovative and doing new things. And that's refreshing to have a company that's that promotes that sort of growth when they're in their own employees. Definitely. I mean, I, I feel super lucky that, you know, in my first three years, I was able, I was given the opportunity to launch, you know, numerous products. And, and a lot of times you don't get that opportunity. You're, you're doing one specific repetitive task. But at Chobani, pretty much from the get-go, I was given tasks and I was trusted to use my knowledge and my skills to get the job done, you know. And, and, and now that I've been there for three years, I'm, I'm given more responsibility and more roles. And you really get the sense that there's a good path for growth going forward. And, and it's something you really want to be a part of because you can just see Chobani growing as a company and then locally as well in Twin Falls. So. Yeah, so you get to grow along with the company and that's exactly. a really good long-term pro- thing. So that's fantastic. So Porter, thank you for being our guest today and for sharing all about what it's like to be a food scientist and what you love about Southern Idaho. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Secrets Out Idaho. You can follow Southern Idaho Economic Development on social media or visit southernidaho.org to learn more. Please take a moment to leave a rating and review and subscribe so you can be the first to hear more Secrets Out Idaho. Until next time.